Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this video I'm looking at printing on canvas, uh, in particular on canvas sheets. And what's different about the normal printers I look at compared to this one is this is an office printer. It's an Epson Workforce WFC 8690. It's a four color pigment in printer, which means that the inks will be relatively permanent compared with some dye-based inks. Um, but there's only four inks in it. Now, I've made custom profiles for this, uh, relatively easy to make. But what I wanted to show was the fact that this printer, fairly basic printer, is capable of quite good looking results. And in particular, it handles media in a much more robust and solid way than many smaller printers. It's rated for quite a lot of use. The ink carts are fairly large. Um, and unusually compared to the smaller printers I look at, you can comfortably load several sheets of quite thick media. Now, you can't use the tray at the bottom, you have to use the rear feed. Now, here I've got three sheets of canvas. This is A3+, 13 inch by 19 inch. This is a Hewlett Packard canvas, uh, uh, bright white, matte finish, 380 grams. The reason I use this is not because I particularly recommend it, but because years ago I got boxes of it in sample packs when I was doing some testing for Hewlett Packard. And ever since then, um, I always include it in my reviews. Now, you will have to have a hunt round and find yourself some, um, some canvas, or you can cut it off a roll, but it needs to be trimmed well. Now I'm just going to load it in the back of the printer here. There we go. Printer asks me what it is, a paper size A3+, 13 inch by 19 inch. You can print smaller sheets as well on this. Um, you can print longer sheets if we have custom, uh, custom page sizes, but you would definitely need to experiment with that and print off a roll. So we've got paper type. I'm using uh, the matte media. For some, you may find that the thick three setting works better, but matte works well here, puts a bit more ink down on the paper. This uh, canvas in particular, it's a matte canvas. If I was gonna show prints of this and that, I'd probably want to coat it because if you add a gloss finish to this, it will give the colors a lot more punch. Now, we'll see the examples I get out of this when I do some prints, but I'm just gonna run off three prints here. The first one is a, Relatively, it doesn't push the colours too much. It's a picture of uh, a gull that I took years ago, one that I use for testing quite a bit because I use it to show how you can do resizing and various other things. But anyway, I'm going to print this. Now, I'm printing this from Photoshop. You could print it from other packages as well. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use the Epson print layout software with this printer. Now, I'll show that in a moment when I show making canvas wraps, but if you use a printer that handles, um, that is controllable via the Epson print layout software, there are gallery wrap options. There are not here, you will have to do it yourself in editing if you want a gallery wrap, but this first one is just a simple print. Now I've gone to the uh, computer here, and I've opened up this image and I'm just setting print. Now I specified the canvas profile that I've made for it. And all I really need to do, um, I've sized it as I want and I'm printing. The laptop is not the quickest of laptops and it's a very big image because this is a file that I produced for a much larger print. So it'll take a little while to process. We'll get a light flash here when it's transferring the data over and hopefully we should get a print out before too long. The printer's woken up and it's gonna come out. The printer is actually quite fast. I'm just gonna check the feed at the back here. There we go, single sheet has fed in. So I've got three sheets here and it has no problem handling multiple sheets of this. Looking at the specifications, you easily ought to be able to get five. Maybe you could get a few more, but um, I don't really want that many canvas prints to test this, nor have I got an inexhaustible supply of sheets of A3 plus canvas. But anyway, it's printing. And just wait for the print to come out. Because I'm printing this at the best 
setting, quality setting, it's a bit slower. So it takes a minute or so to print a large print like this. You can experiment if you use the normal print setting. There's not that much difference, but this is one of those things that you need to experiment with. Find out what quality settings work with your media. Uh, this is not a fine art printer, so it comes with no profiles. All the profiles I've created for this, um, I'm going to be writing a, a more detailed review of this printer, although not the office functionality. Um, I'm going to be doing that and all the profiles that I've made for this will be available. Um, just you'll need to contact me about the profiles and uh, we can sort something out about that. But this is a custom profile that I've made for this particular media. And I don't see why it shouldn't work for quite a lot of other similar canvas media. Uh, the, one of the things with this particular printer is obviously it has no profiles normally. So if you try printing just using the normal printer color photo uh, settings that you might for a printer like this, the colors are not necessarily that great. I noticed certainly in black and white tones had a very distinct sort of purplish tinge to them, mostly fixed by using a proper profile. But uh, this is an office printer after all. But if you want to print stuff like this, a printer like this is a lot easier to use and more reliable, I would say, than using a small photo printer if you want to print lots of prints like this. So the real reason I'm looking at this printer is to see, is it an option for people who want a heftier printer, more output, a better printer for their business than necessarily concentrating on absolute top print quality? Print quality of this won't be up to a dedicated photo printer, but it may be a much cheaper and a much more practical printer to use. Depends on your market, what you're actually producing prints for, what your market is, who you sell to, and the business side, how much profit you're making. There we are, prints come out. And there's the first print runoff on a sheet of canvas. Now, how you mount such an image, how you actually display it, um, entirely up to you. I'll show an option for, for that when I do the next print. Well, that's the third print I'm gonna do. But there we go. That's not a bad looking print. Um, it's a little dark. One of the problems with uh, settings like this is that this is not a photo printer. So you may need to tweak your images a little bit to get them looking the way you want. But as I say, if this was a print I was going to mount, I would probably coat it, varnish it, spray coat it anyway. But the colours are fine on that one. Let's have a look at another print. Now this one is much more brightly coloured. And this one is going to be harder for the printer to manage. Now I'm just going to print this again, the same as I have done before. Once again, I fitted it to size here to fit this uh, particular paper and I'm using the same profile. Uh, print settings are the same as before and I'm just going to press print. As before, we'll have a bit of a wait while it processes the file. Should be a little bit quicker this one. But this is a much more strongly colored image. This is pushing the capabilities of this printer much more. So it really all depends on what the market you're aiming at is. Um, I have to say, many people who sell canvas prints, the people who buy them wouldn't know imperfect color if it fell on them. Well, you know, you don't actually necessarily say that to them. Um, it's how you market them is what matters. But certainly um, I regard anyone looking for canvas prints as not looking for the same level of quality as they are for a paper print. There we go, it's loaded perfectly well as before. No problem, very robust feed. As I say, you can't feed this sort of media in through here. You can stack up cards, you can stack up paper and canvas at the back here and they print just fine. But anyway, we'll just wait for this one to come out now. So we're nearly done here. Uh, you can hear when the back edge of the media goes through the mechanism. There's often a little click that'll give you an indication that you're nearly there. 
And you know, the image looks fine. It was a picture I took uh, on the south coast of England a few years ago um, at a place called Beer and um, on the beach there and I got some nice brightly coloured uh, deck chairs. And it's the colours of the deck chairs and the likes which really test an image like this. As I say, this is not fine art by any means. This is, this is bathroom art. This is the sort of picture that uh, people will have framed, put up in the bathroom. By the way, if you're selling pictures like this for people who are going to put them in bathrooms, almost certainly you want to varnish them, uh, make them you know, better in some way. I've got a canvas print I did about 12, 15 years ago in the kitchen here, and it's absolutely fine because it was varnished after use, and it's been fine ever since. And that's in an environment um, with steam, cooking, everything, never been a problem with it. It's about how you prepare your prints afterwards. And I'll show that on the next print, some options for, cut, for mounting images like this. Well, there we go. Those are pretty strong colours for a matte canvas print on a four colour pigment ink printer. Uh, that's not at all bad. So, I've printed this with a border. You have to, you can't print borderless on this particular printer. So you can get the border down to, I believe, a tenth of an inch, but you will have a border on it. So it's a matter of how you want to display the picture. Here, this one here has a bigger border on it, but that's one way of doing it. You just mount it normally, just mount it as you would a normal picture. What about on various frames? Now, these are various types that I've got from suppliers in the UK. Um, I can't give you any listings. I got these quite a few years ago as samples and that. So what you'll have to do is have a look for craft suppliers and things who sell things like this. This one here is an A4 frame. Um, it's for stretching a canvas over. It has, uh, if I peel tape off here, it's sticky on the sides. So I can actually put canvas over it, trim it, stick it to the sides. I would with one of these prefer to staple it at the back as well because the sticky can give way after a while but certainly it makes it much easier to mount so that's one there that's a fairly traditional type of frame or I've got another one here this is on on thick MDF black at the edge once again you can peel this off and it's sticky for this what you would do is stick a picture to the front of it now, you have to be careful with the edges. So you've got two techniques here. You can either take this off, stick it on the back of your printer, and then with a scalpel, trim it around the edge. It takes a bit of care in doing it. Or you can try printing to the exact size and matching it up on here on the sticky. It takes a bit of doing, but with the black edging, solid bit of wood, and even mount holes at the back, that's quite useful. As I say, I cannot tell you where to get these anymore, but I have seen them in craft suppliers widely listed here in the UK and also some places in the States when I looked on it. You should be able to find stuff. If anyone has suggestions for these, do let me know. Um, it's quite useful. I don't use them myself. I've kept these just for samples. Here's another one. This one is another wooden frame. It has sticky around the edge and it has cardboard on the front to give it, make it a bit more robust. Once again, how you actually mount it, you need to consider how you're gonna handle the edges. And from that, normally if I was printing with something like Epson print layout, it has bits of the software which do the expansion of the canvas. Now, if you're using a tool like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, just do a search for methods for expanding for canvas printing, for edging, for wraps. If you look for that, you'll find various techniques for it. Now I've got an image here that I've processed manually and this is gonna print on an A3 plus uh, sheet. It doesn't need to cover the whole sheet because I'm gonna put it on an A4 frame. And you can see here where I've taken an image and this is the pier at Cromer on the Norfolk coast. And I've just using Photoshop, I've just expanded the image to make it bigger than its basic size. And I'm just going to print that one. And once again, I'm using the same profile and we'll just tell that to print. Now it doesn't matter 
that the image as I say, is smaller than the sheet of canvas or anything like that because all it has to do is be big enough to cover the frame. It's lit up and uh, here's the third sheet I loaded earlier and that should just get drawn in perfectly fine and should print. There it goes. Right, there we are. There's the print. Um, as you see, somewhat sort of vague expansion around the area that I wanted printing. The actual image itself is A4 and it's just been expanded. And if I take it on a sheet, put it onto one of the mounts here, you can see how I could stretch it round the edge. And so that's set for the actual picture, just to allow for some expansion over the edge. How you size your pictures, entirely up to you, how you want them to fit. Um, so if I took this one here, slightly thinner, still A4. So on that one, we are wrapping the image round that way. Now, I haven't sized this one perfectly for this. This was for a slightly different frame. But the general idea is that you take your A4 image and then you expand it. Or you can actually take the image and just wrap it anyway. And you'll get a crop of your original image. That's entirely up, how, up to you how you want to display your image. But there are all kinds of ways of mounting canvas onto things like this. That's a frame an open frame or a solid back. Uh, this one would do for prints on paper as well, so you can stick onto it. But do be careful with the edges when you cut them because it can easily show as a border that you don't want. You can just see where the media shows through, where the ink, uh, when it cuts through with a scalpel. Even if you're very careful, it can still look a bit awkward, a bit clumsy. Anyway, I hope that's given an idea of one of the capabilities of this particular printer, which isn't widely advertised. Um, the printer may be of absolutely no use to your photo and artwork printing, or it could be something that's useful to consider, which is why I'm looking at it. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. Um, I've got a few more uh, little videos I'm gonna do connected with this printer whilst it's here, and uh, an overall review of it as well. But um, certainly different from my normal printers, and huge, it takes two people to lift it. Thanks very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel if you found it interesting, and do remember to comment on it. I get a lot of useful feedback from the comments and do appreciate it. So thank you.